three, four, four. This is our advanced calculator we prepared by using conditionals and using a little more better on a way to manipulate and produce a calculator. So I hope you understood. I hope you enjoyed this concept. All right, so in the previous tutorial, we created this calculator which, in, which had advanced functionality but we learned conditionals and we applied that concept. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna learn a little more concepts. So let's go into our structures part. We're gonna talk about structures, data structures, because programs are tend to store values and what you need are data structures to store the values. So Python provides so many data structures, just like in C++ or in other languages, there are structures to store the data. In some are like arrays, which have data stored in contiguous memory locations, like in adjacent locations. So one we have are called dictionaries. So let's up, uh, open up a new file and I'm just gonna call it something like, let's say dictionary. So dictionary, let me get that right, dictionary dot, Python, so .py. Okay, so this is my file. Um, let's just move that in. Um, what we're gonna create for this is that I'm gonna teach you the concept and syntax of dictionary by creating this kind of little program, which is called a converter. So we know the days of the weeks and they sometimes could be referred to just uh, two letters. Like for instance, uh, three letters, just like Wednesday could be just like wed. Um, Friday could just be rep represented as fry and Saturday could just be represented that. But we want to convert that into whole. So we could just like sat to Saturday. So can we create a program that could uh, convert that? This is an excellent example of dictionary. So let's create something like that. So we could say week converter or conversion. And we could put this equal sign. So we have this equal sign and then these curly braces. Now ignore whatever came on the terminal because that was a mistake. Over here we could open up our curly braces and we essentially need these things. So what we could do is now a dictionary has a key and a value pair. So they, everything is stored in key value format. So just remember like in a, a real dictionary what you could get out in your books or library, you would always see when you open a dictionary, you would see some kind of definition. So I would say some word like for instance, you go to the A section, you see a word and then you see a definition to it, right? So that word is basically the key and the definition to the word, the meaning of the word will be the value. So the key and value pair, it's like that, just like a, a real dictionary. So we're trying to create something like that. So the, the thing is that we're gonna be dealing with strings and more or less you could do with integers and whatever you want, but because we have like we're going to start from Monday, so it's going to be mon. And then we have colon to separate the key and the value. So this is going to be represented as Monday. Then we have a comma and then we have Tuesday, so two. And then we have Tuesday, so we could say something like that. Then a comma, then we say Wednesday, so we could just say colon. And then we say Wednesday. So yeah, just like that. Then comma, and then we're going to have Thursday, so thir. And uh, let's say colon. Thursday, Thursday, okay. And then we have Fry, and then we have Friday, and then we have Sat, and then we have Saturday. Okay, so now we have all of this created, right? Uh, Saturday, Sunday, I forgot one more, Sunday. So now there are total seven. So remember the important thing here is that you need these commas separated for the key, every key and value pair. So everything is matched with key and value, key and value. Now, how do we access this? So this is our question. So what we could do is that we could use the print function because I want to show this stuff on the screen. I could use the weak conversion. So weak conversion. So I would just hit the tab for that. And then I have to access using this open and closed square brackets you could call these as indices so but we want to we have to access through the key so basically this is the key monday tuesday wednesday thursday so some, suppose i want the sunday key so i'll just say sun and when i do this i would save this and i would try to run this and now you could see that i have sunday as appearing in my terminal screen so what i would do i would just clear this and just run uh, run it again so there you go sunday appearing on the screen so we could have another way to access it and that would be something that is print and then we could have week and then we could have conversions and then 
we could uh, not only get the key value, but we could say something like this using the get function. So get, and then we could have the access specified. So over we have Sunday. So now we could say sat, sat for Saturday. So just comment this one out so that it doesn't work. So we could put a pound symbol right in front of it. And now control alt and N. And there you go, we got Saturday over here. Now what's good, so awesome about this uh, get function is that you could access specify anything you want, like something that is not even existing. So something like, uh, let's say mop. So if mop is not existing, what's it gonna print out? It's gonna give us none. So that means it's nothing in, in there. But like if there is nothing, we want to print out some uh, kind of a value. So we could like have a default value to it. So an invalid, key something like that so an invalid key so if i say mop instead of having none displayed to me now it's going to say an invalid key so you could prefer and write anything you want again over here that it doesn't matter to have keys as integer uh, strings you could have them as numbers so you could have zero one two and then access them through their numbers so like for instance this is like this and i could access it by just instead of giving it that i would just give the value zero and Instead of having an invalid key, now it's gonna give me Monday. So Control Alt and N, and there you go. Monday has appeared on the terminal screen. So that was with uh, key dictionaries, and now what we're gonna explain is another structure. So another structure that we know uh, a lot about is called the list. So a list is defined. So let me just like save this in uh, one place and create a new folder or something so that you could better understand this. So just create a new folder over here and we could just call it as list.python. And over here in the list, so we could create a data structure that has, so I'd say list, and it would have something like um, values to it. So we could have associated values. We could have either things like, we could say something like, let's say fruits. Now you know like a single string, now over here we could have different, so we could say apple, comma, and they're separated by commas. We could have banana, and then we could have orange, we could have grapes. Now we have three of them, it's four of them. I mean, B-A-N-A-N-A, -A -A. so this is correct, banana. Okay, so now we're gonna have that, and now this is our list. Now we could access the list, so just like uh, with our dictionaries, we could access it through the index. So we could just say fruits, F-R-U-I-T-S, and we could say sub, and then we could just put inside of this apple or anything you want so let's say apple and save it control alt and n now you can see that there is not indices must be integers or slice so indices is the thing so over here um you're not allowed to do something like that because that's the concept of dictionaries over here what you do is provide indices now we know that computers start from zero so this is the first zero indices this is the one indice this is the two index and this is the three index. So if you wanna access Apple, you have to give a zero index. So if I do this, now you can see that error is gone and you can see that there is errors over here because this is something that's not necessary. So I, I calm that out. Now we're supposed to see Apple and appearing as our in our terminal screen. There you go, an Apple is appearing on our terminal screen. So let's CLS this and uh, let's do something else. Let's create a two dimensional list. So how do we do that? So suppose we have a list grid, okay. And what we could do in here is that we could create another list inside. So we could define a list grid and we could have more lists inside of it. Did you get what I'm saying? So I could say one, two, three, and then I could say comma separated. So um, we could say four, five, and six, and then we could have another comma, and we could say seven, eight, we'll say seven, comma, eight, and comma, nine. And there you go. So we could have another row over here, let's say zero. Now we could have, what, what is this basically is that it's a list and it, in this whole gigantic list, there's our separate sub lists inside. So this is like, we could say list zero, list one, list two, and list three. I could call these as rows because they're generally like rows and you can see that there is four rows and there are three columns. So if I wanna access, like for instance, I want the fourth number over here. I want to access this. How am I supposed to access this? I could access this using the print function. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna print, but uh, I'm gonna go in the list underscore grid. And what I'm gonna print here is that 
I know that the first thing is that the row, so we have to tackle the row zero, and then this is one. So we're gonna start first go in the row. So basically, every th thing goes over here. Now after that, we have something inside of it. So we have zero over here. So we're gonna have one, and then we have zero. So we we'll tackle like that. Now we're gonna have the fourth value specified. So we would say Control Alt and N. There you go. Four is appearing on the screen. There you go. That's nice. Now what about having something else appearing on the screen instead of four? How about having all the rows appearing? So for that we could have a for loop. So we know how to create a for loop, and we could do something similar to that. So uh, just to remember to remind you how to use a for loop, we could say four, and we just call this as a row because these are just like rows in and then we could use the in keyword and say list underscore grid and then i would just say colon print and i would say um row so now this is gonna allow me to print every element inside so if i run this you can see one two three four five six seven eight nine and then zero but if i want every single element individually what do i do i create a nested for loop now what a nested for loop is it's a loop inside another loop just like we have a list grid so we have a list and then inside the list there are in separate lists just like that we could create a for loop inside another for loop and that's called a nested loop so for we could say column in we could say row. So we could say for a column in row, we could say print, and we could say print columns. I hope that made sense because what we're doing now is that instead of having the row separated, we're getting a column thing inside the row. So it's just gonna keep on printing columns and going after that. So let's save this code. And now let's run and see if we got it. So we got individual elements over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, zero. That was amazing. I hope you love this uh, code and I hope you understood the concepts of data structures, some, some things like like dictionaries, some things like list with this awesome programming example. Moreover, uh, you learn the concept of nested 